moment, let me just go ahead and review what I've done already so far. Uh, I've covered the trapezius muscle. This is the trapezius as a whole. Notice the portion behind the neck, uh, behind the cylinder of the neck, you have the back of the neck portion of the trapezius. Notice its blocky shape. Uh, notice the seven cervical lines up at the top of that trapezoid of the shoulder girdle section of the trapezius. Uh, notice how it comes in towards that seven cervical and becomes more tendinous in that white area there. Um, notice the rhomboidal portion as well that helps pull the scapula borders from the medial border of the scapula closer together, uh, helping to assist in pulling the arms back. This um, portion of the muscle looks kind of triangularic. Again, this helps bring the uh, the shoulder blades, the scapula is closer together from its point of attachment here and closer to the spine. Uh, just below the border of the scapula you have the infraspinatus muscle, that's this area here, followed by the teres minor muscle, this little sliver here that attaches to this point of the humerus bone. Then you have the teres major muscle, just a little bit more evident there in that area of the scapular region. And then, of course, you have the latissimus dorsi muscle, this strong, triangular-shaped muscle. It's one of the biggest muscles in the body, one of the most powerful ones as well. Helps to assist in pulling the arms back, helping to lift us up when we're climbing. Um, it helps to assist other muscles. This particular muscle has several uh, areas that uh, are worth mentioning. Uh, the serratus anterior hiding below that muscle over to the side edge where it gets its thickness. Um, that uh, area is followed by two bulges on either side here of the erector spini muscle. And then notice how the erector spini muscle becomes more column shaped as it comes down to the sacrum uh, at its point of attachment there. And again, um, the erector spini spreads and distributes its mass throughout most of the ribs on the back, helping to assist in keeping us more erect. That's partially where it gets its name from, the erector spinae. Uh, underneath the erector spinae is the multifidus muscle, which we talked about earlier. And then, of course, uh, overlapping behind the latissimus dorsi, you see a little sliver uh, poking out here, that teardrop shape area of the muscle of, of the external oblique. That's the muscle that helps pull you over to the side to help grab something that might have fallen to the side, let's say, bringing the ribcage closer to the pelvis laterally. Um, this is the portion of it that rests on top of the pelvis. It's called the fat flank pad portion of the muscle. Notice it's fibrous uh, separating it from the uh, the pelvic girdle mass. This is of course the pelvic girdle mass. Uh, again notice the overall ovoid shape sort of hiding within that being uh, in, a, in relationship to this ovoid. I think it's very important to keep that in mind. Uh, notice the shape of it maintains itself as I try to model the shape of the ovoid hiding within this mass. It's kind of round and cylindrical overall, uh, but many people would like to think of this area as a box-like shape. Uh, of course, that's a very good idea because you can define it in terms of the side, on both sides, the posterior, the bottom of the box, top of the box, and it might help you in uh, better understanding the perspective of what's going on in that area of the pelvis. Uh, of course, what I've also done is uh, start to define some of the gluteus maximus. On the other half, I left it a little more black and white, kind of a little hint of indicating some of the value range of maybe what was going on in the skin, but then also trying to show you sort of a, uh, a peer through the muscle to what's going on with the bones of the pelvis in relation to the femur. Um, I like to do that sometimes. I think that's kind of cool because it allows one to kind of better understand what's happening in relationship to the muscle. Um, and then, of course, uh, I've started to define the deltoid muscle. The three distinctive heads are more clearly shown here. The one coming down from the bottom of that portion of the scapula down to the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. The one coming down from the acromion process of the shoulder joint down to the delta tuberosity of the humerus and also overlapping a little sliver you can see uh, of the anterior portion of the muscle, that anterior head of the deltoid coming down to the same delta tuberosity of the humerus. Uh, I've started to indicate some of the bones here and what I'm going to do is try to uh, 
define a few things here for you as I go along. What I did is I started massing in the overall values um, by first looking at the basic shadows, uh, the shape that the shadows creates in the mass, where the light was coming from, and I first carefully drew the shadow shape mass first on the form that I was trying to model, uh, separating essentially the light mass from the shadow mass. Uh, and then I start to mass in with some single hatching and uh, a little bit of light smudging in the basic shadow mass, keeping the mass flat overall. So overall, my, my beginning uh, for the modeling or the shading process is usually kind of flat. And then I begin to define the, the edge of the shadow, the core shadow, uh, and the reflected lights. And I start to build out some of the form with respect to the planes underneath it in the muscles and in the body that I'm trying to uh, respect and follow geometrically in order to best build a stronger sense of volumetric description. So what I did here is I went in this direction uh, with a lot of my shading then, you know, trying to find the individual portions, the muscular fibers as uh, I've come to understand them from dissecting cadavers uh, when I was beginning my studies and, and even to this day I still like to do that. Um, it helps me to better understand how to describe them. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start to bring out some of the ribs in the rib cage, hiding underneath here. Trying to define maybe a little bit of light hitting that with my white charcoal. And then I'm going to to find the next one here. I just need a little mild hint. I'm going to continue to define them further as I go along, but I want to definitely indicate within this muscle mass some of those other descriptions going on that you might see on the body when you're describing the form from the model and then I'm going in with some of the, uh, the black charcoal pencil and I'm going in to find some of the values that might hit it in the shadows on the other side of the ribs And notice the muscular fibers and the direction they're traveling in, heading towards the spine. And I'm going to continue to model that a little bit further, but let's talk about the tricep masses.